in the world's biggest civilization Minecraft server, tens of thousands of players compete to build kingdoms that will dominate the world of Eldom. So how did one man's empire become truly universal, colonize another world, and force the gods themselves to strike him down? This is the story of the Iraqi Imperium, its wars, geopolitics, and earth-shaking collapse. Right now is the best time for you to join our server at play.stoneworks.gg because we just started a new seasonal world, Tremon's Akananda. Come build your own empires, fight wars, start religions, and play your character at play.stoneworks.gg. And don't forget to like and subscribe or I will strike you down. The Iraqi Imperium started as the small and humble goblin tribe of Iraq, which fled a genocide in the Kingdom of Canaan, settling several independent and underground city-states on this here peninsula. They would be scoundrels here, raiding and pillaging other cities around them, and even each other's holdings. They were scattered among other countries, but they weren't controlled by them, except for the focus of our story, the island base of Iraq which was intimidated into becoming a vassal of a nation across the sea. But soon there came a migration from the world of Rathnir, a group of human and dwarven refugees and vagabonds. Among them was the player, Neo Aurelian. Neo settled in the Iraq base and worked actively to improve it, transforming it from an underground base with a rainbow wiener on top to a proper, organized town. He climbed the city's social ladder, and he played the game of incentives and power politics. Soon, Iraq was a bustling city, and Neo was elected as the democratic leader, the Akkad. The success here was so profound that he actually had to stop the goblins from worshipping him as a divine leader, cause simple little beasts those guys are. Iraq's influence could not be maintained to just one city-state, though. First, some of the other goblin cities started pledging their loyalty to it. Then they negotiated and bought some cities from the surrounding two countries. And then Neo married an oligarch and sorceress named Lady Zaid from the faraway nation of Druk Yul. When Druk Yul collapsed into a giant coalition war over the killing of a single horse, of all things, Iraq sent troops, which helped to win the war and returned to be Neo Aurelian's standing army. At this point, Iraq seemingly had its own mini city-state empire, and it was entering the world stage, but it was still vassalized by the neighboring nation of Rodenbroek. So Rodenbroek, fearing that Iraq would rebel and try to capture some of their cities, forced Iraq into independence. But ironically, Neo and his council voted to stay vassalized, and their forced independence allowed Iraq to be the final city to join its own empire. It was then that the council convened, and they voted to dismantle their democratic traditions and proclaim Neo Aurelian as Imperator of Iraqa and the new Iraqi Imperium. The newly united Imperium consolidated its control. The minister, DFW Gold, went around and got all the cities to stop fighting each other, centralize their armies, and submit themselves to the capital's culture. But as this was happening, Iraq's friends to the north in the pirate state of Barbosa was invaded by the infamous bandit hunters of Shiro Kaneza. Neo immediately sent troops and the powers of Lady Zaid's sorcery to help Barbosa in the War of the Black Flag. But it was too late. Shiro Kaneza took and plundered the capital of the pirate empire. Yarrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
and the rest of the consortium members voted to kick Araka out. So Araka marched on the Barbosan capital, and overpowered them with their superior population, wealth, and magic. Soon after, the Barbosans fled, their territories were annexed as Iraqi provinces, and Eldum's golden age of piracy was brought to an end. This was the Valorant War, and it was Araka's turning point when the world noticed the rising nation, and perhaps it was the last moment that they could have been stopped. Neo Aurelian's style of gameplay was purely political. He did not worship any of the gods, he did not roleplay out his character. He was here for one reason, expand and conquer, and Araka developed into a very complex bureaucratic state that was well suited to this. The leadership knew that conquest wasn't truly a game of war, it was a game of people and persuasion. Araka was rich and populated, and they had multiple institutions to which they could appoint powerful people, the feudal system, the imperial senate, the noble houses, and the military hierarchy. Araka could attract and keep its vassal states because they'd convince these lords that it was worth joining and staying with the Imperium. In it, they would be rich and given powerful titles, and if all else failed, Araka had a massive military and mercenary connections that they could call upon to help persuade their enemies. But this, hopefully, was supposed to be a tool to be used sparingly and in isolated cases. Now, all of these institutions and promises were guaranteed by Neo Aurelian and his chain of command. People trusted the top three leaders of the Imperator Neo and his right and left hands, Lady Zaid and player Catalyst. Catalyst would head the domestic affairs and official diplomacy. Lady Zaid helped bankroll the state and maintained unofficial relationships in covert diplomacy, not to mention some sorcery witch magic while Neo served as the stabilizing pin in all of this, as his cult of personality and mythos surrounding him kept the Empire's managers faithful to the Empire and unambitious, getting them to compete with each other for the Imperator's favor. All of this, when combined with the international diplomacy of proxy wars, negotiating settlements, building relationships, issuing threats and promises, and declaring wars, is how you build a giant empire that can stand on its own. That being said, Araka continued to grow more and more, until it sat at the table with the biggest and most powerful states in Eldum history. At this time, there was a powerful triple alliance of other states called the AWE, Aristios, and Shirokaneza state of the Zamots Union. But when Araka and some other nations joined, it became one of the richest and mightiest military coalitions in Minecraft history. This was the Eldum Entente. But an incident would pull the Entente in an unexpected direction. A player from the other world on the server, Rathnir, robbed over seven million dollars from Araka and Shirokaneza, royally pissing off the leaders of the Entente. The Entente then, led by the notorious player Elkul, went to this player's home kingdom of Aurora, one of the most powerful and richest nations in Rathnir. But Aurora was currently bogged down in the civil war for their larger constituent empire of Ulderash. The Ulderashi Civil War is one of the messiest and longest single conflicts in Minecraft history, but the Eldam Entente showed up right here in the middle of it. At first, they didn't want to get involved, but when Aurora refused to pay them recompense and punish the thieving player, the Entente leaders decided that they needed to declare war, so the Eldam Entente joined the Ulderashi Civil War on the side of the Loyalists against the Aurorans. They shipped their armies and war supplies to the world of Rathnir, and set up camp right outside the walls of the Auroran capital of Fornost. This was the collective military of Eldum's five most powerful nations, led primarily by Elkul and his mercenaries in Shiro Keneza. The Aurorans sat on the massive walls and fired down arrows at the attackers. The defenders poured out to meet them in front of the walls and embroiled them in a fight there, but some bridged out to the walls and blew a massive hole in it. The Entente fighters charged through the hole, ending up in Aurora's church, and the Aurorans poured into the church and a scrambled melee began. But the Entente pushed through and took to the city streets. They killed several warriors out here and made good ground until an Auroran counterattack swung around and smashed into the disorganized Entente forces. They were pushed back out the walls to where they started, but the Aurorans made a fatal mistake here. As they stood in the defensive position of the wall's hole, the Entente baited them out, 
so some started jumping down to the ground outside, and more poured out in support, and the battle was once again on a level playing field. Out here, the Autox circled the mob of Aurorans and killed them off, and the Auroran army was decimated, and the Battle of Fornost was won. This intervention came to be known as the War of the Worlds. The Aurorans paid off reparations after this defeat sparked even more rebellions within their territory. And the Eldamites stood proud, uniting to invade one of the most powerful kingdoms in their rival world of Rathnir. With Araka playing a major role in funding, organizing, and fighting this war, it seemed that they had become unstoppable. But when you're on top of the world, sometimes you think that you're too big for the restrictions that others face. And Neo, in his increasing age, had become a bit more bold and a bit more crazy. So he turned his sights to Eldum's northeast nations, a usually prosperous and stable region that recently had a few petty conflicts here and there. So Neo announced to his country that he had a prophetic dream that foresaw the collapse and ruin of the Northeast should they be allowed to tear each other apart. So he issued to the six countries an ultimatum, join with Araka, or face war, conquest, and destruction. This immediately set the diplomatic world ablaze. Nations like the Cog and anarchist communes planned a mass migration south in the case of war, and Rodenbrook prepared to burn their cities to the ground if Araka decided to march on them. Neo raised massive armies from all around the Empire, but bad news made him hesitate. The Eldamontant decided to kick Araka out. The largest international coalition in Eldam's history was starting to muster against him in defense of the Northeast, and some of his territories were even declaring independence out of fear. But he still sent his armies to the border to initiate the invasion. Two nations immediately buckled. Yunria and the Cog handed themselves over. But that night, the counselors of his government came to him and tried to convince him to call off his campaign. It was deeply unpopular in his own government. But he stood firm and he yelled at them. He would take this corner of Eldom or he would die trying. But that night, Neo had a dream of destroyed and desolate buildings with fire and grief all around. He saw piles of soldiers' bodies with a spear lodged through the body on the top of the pile. As he looked around, he noticed that this was his capital and the pierced body on top was him. So the next day, Neo called off the invasion, but the Cog and Yunria were still annexed, and just his threats were enough to make the world sh their pants. But after this, Imperator Neo would start taking more and more of a backseat in Araka's governing, and Lady Zaid took the role of regent. In the next few months, Araka still grew, now to its largest size ever ever, spreading all over the entire eastern hemisphere of Eldom. The empire of Araka would come to look like this, with the tiny bright red being the Iraqi heartland and city-state, the soft red being the empire at its peak, and the pink being territories that it once controlled. The Iraqi Imperium was truly the universal empire, the most powerful state in Minecraft history which generations of later states would attempt to trace their lineage back to and call themselves the successors of Araka. But for now, an empire does not grow this big without letting in a few cracks. Neo Aurelian had grown old and tired, and some keen leaders of the vassal states in Heartland noticed that he was slowing down, growing a bit complacent, and letting the state slip into decadence. His chosen heir to the throne, El Kul of Shirokaneza, had recently died. So Neo gathered Lady Zaid and Catalyst in his chambers, and they ended up having a heated argument over the fate of the Empire. At the end of the night, Neo stormed out of the room and declared that Lady Zaid would be the regent and they'd have to find another Imperator. He was gonna go become a potato farmer! So Lady Zaid and Catalyst eventually settled together on a player named Gordon Ramsmy. But Imperator Gordon Ramsmy and the others started squabbling immediately. And after one argument, Zaid took the crown from him for herself. But another of Neo's wives contested her for it and started spreading dangerous conspiracies and claiming the mantle of the true successors of Araka for her own state. Catalyst saw all this going down 
and decided that it was better for Araka to go down in spectacular flames than to decay into a shadow of its former self. So he gathered over half of Araka's lords and nobles in a conspiracy, and they launched what's called the Old Banner's Rebellion. Since Catalyst was on the Imperium's inside since the beginning, he knew that the only tactic they had was to intimidate the rebels into submission with flashy shows of their fighters and mercenaries. So Catalyst told everyone to wait out the Iraqi threats, and with broad international support by the nations that were tired and traumatized by Iraqi hegemony, the rebellion succeeded without a single battle, and the old Iraqi empire split into dozens of nations, old and new. In the legends surrounding the collapse of the empire, Neo Aurelian is said to have marched out to the border of his capital with a small army to start retaking what was lost. Without the warriors from the rebelling provinces, it was just the standing army of his cities and his elite allied mercenaries. He looked out over the towns of the seceding lands and pondered there for a long while before withdrawing back. He couldn't bring himself to declare war on the people he brought into his empire, and he couldn't fight those who still considered themselves Iraqi. So he turned back to his home and accepted the fate of the empire as is now written in the history books. We just launched a new world on the Stoneworks Minecraft server, so now is your time to come and remake this success at play.stoneworks.gg. Like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.